Once your surgery is completed, it is essential that you follow all of the post-operative instructions given to you in order to heal as quickly and safely as possible. The following instructions are your obligation. Waking up from anesthesia. As soon as you wake up from the anesthesia, it is common to feel sore and drowsy. Light bandages and a post-surgical bra may be placed. You will be monitored in the recovery room for an hour or two until you are ready to be discharged home. Discharge home. Once you wake up, you will be discharged home. A driver is required to drive you home after surgery anytime general anesthesia or sedation is administered. It is also a requirement for you to be discharged home to the care of a responsible adult who will stay with you for the first 24 hours after surgery to monitor your health and support you. All of these instructions must be clear to your caretaker. Arrival home. After you arrive home, it is important to rest, to stay well hydrated, and to take medication as prescribed. The time you arrive home can be a good time to take the first dose of ibuprofen and one Percocet. The first few days after surgery. Be sure to clear your calendar from any major obligations for at least the first three days after surgery. Do not drive, operate heavy machinery, or sign important documents. Prepare your family, friend, or designated caretaker for the first few days. Having help around the house can make a positive difference. Have them keep a journal of your medications and the times you take each one, and have them keep you on the schedule prescribed by your surgeon. After surgery, you should expect temporary side effects such as pain, soreness, bruising, swelling, numbness, tingling, tightness, high riding implants, abnormal sensations, and fatigue. The side effects are often most pronounced during the first few days, then gradually improve. No two patients are the same. Some patients experience more side effects, others less. Some people heal quicker, others slower. 80% of our breast augmentation patients are able to resume light, low impact activities within 48 to 72 hours. Most patients with sedentary jobs can return to work in three to seven days. Patients with jobs requiring physical activity should avoid lifting, straining, and exertion for at least six weeks. It is common for the breast to be swollen and bruised after breast augmentation, and for the implants to feel and appear high and tight. The implants will gradually drop and settle over the course of about three to six months. Sometimes, one breast can be further ahead or behind the other with healing. If this occurs, be patient. As a reminder, almost all women have some degree of natural breast asymmetry. After surgery, these differences are expected to remain. Full healing will take a longer period of time. Most patients feel healed after three to six months, but full healing can take one to two years. It is important for you to follow your surgeon's instructions, including avoiding strenuous activities for at least six weeks, to embrace your recovery, and to maintain a positive and patient mindset. Position after surgery and sleeping. The position after surgery when resting and sleeping should be lying on your back with your head elevated at a 30 to 45 degree angle for four weeks after surgery. Most patients find a recliner or wedge pillow with an extra pillow under your knees most comfortable. Getting plenty of sleep after surgery is important for your recovery. Eight to nine hours of sleep per night are recommended to aid your healing. If you are having trouble sleeping during the first two weeks after surgery, you may take an over-the-counter sleeping pill or the prescribed sleeping pill. Fluids. Keep yourself well hydrated after surgery. Have at least 12 glasses of water per day for the first two weeks after surgery. Drinking water after surgery flushes the anesthesia from the body and promotes wound healing. It is easy to become dehydrated after surgery. Dehydration may cause nausea and headaches. Stick to non-carbonated, non-alcoholic, caffeine-free, and green tea-free beverages such as water. Alcohol should be avoided for at least four weeks following surgery. Diet. Keep yourself well-nourished after surgery. This will aid your healing. The stress of surgery can interfere with the digestion, so for the first three days after surgery, you'll want to eat soft, easily digestible foods such as applesauce, chicken broth, scrambled eggs, and yogurt. As you regain your appetite, eat a healthy, nutritious diet that includes a high amount of protein, low salt, and low inflammation. Avoid salt, sugar, caffeine, alcohol, and refined carbohydrates for at least one month after surgery. Medications. Take all medications as prescribed. Be certain to follow the instructions provided by the pharmacy and written on the labels of the prescriptions. Pain medications. Manage your pain with scheduled pain medicine. Pain and soreness are normal parts of the post-operative recovery period. 
The medications prescribed are geared towards keeping the pain and soreness tolerable. Unfortunately, it is impossible for our team or the medications to completely eliminate pain and soreness after surgery. If used as prescribed, a large majority of patients tolerate the medications well and go on to heal without consequence. Most patients will be prescribed two different pain medications, extra strength ibuprofen and a stronger narcotic pain medication such as oxycodone, also known as Percocet, or hydrocodone, also known as Norco or Vicodin. When you get home can be a good time to take the first dose of ibuprofen and one Percocet. Most patients will take both pain medications for two to three days, then transition to ibuprofen as needed. However, every person is different. If you do not need the stronger narcotic pain medicine, then it is not necessary to take it. If you do need the stronger narcotic pain medicine, do not be afraid to take it. It is important to keep yourself comfortable. The stronger narcotic pain medication can be hard on your system. It can make you feel drowsy, loopy, constipated, or nauseous. So the less of it you take, and the sooner you discontinue it, the better. Antibiotics. Antibiotics may be prescribed to prevent infection. If antibiotics are prescribed, take the entire prescription until finished. Anti-nausea medicine. The effects of anesthesia can make some patients experience nausea. If post-anesthesia nausea or vomiting occurs, it will typically go away during the first 24 to 48 hours after surgery. You may take the prescribed anti-nausea medicine as needed to help relieve symptoms. The effect of pain medications can also make some patients experience nausea. The surgeon recommends always taking pain medication with a small amount of food and recommends starting with half of a pain pill to see how the medication is tolerated and only taking the narcotic pain medicine as needed. Relaxation medicine. You may prescribe relaxation medicine called lorazepam, also known as Ativan, that can help with anxiety and insomnia. If you do not need this medicine, do not take it. However, some patients find the use of this medicine helpful for a few days or nights to help with anxiety or trouble sleeping. You may take this medication only as needed for up to three weeks. Use caution as this medicine may make you feel sleepy or drowsy. GI medicines. Some patients have problems with constipation following surgery. If this occurs, try drinking prune juice or taking an over-the-counter laxative such as docusate sodium, also called colase, or milk of magnesia. Walking can also help. Blood thinning medications. Avoid all aspirin for four weeks after surgery unless otherwise instructed by your surgeon. If before surgery you're regularly taking any blood thinning medications such as aspirin, warfarin, also known as Coumadin, or Apixaban, also called Eliquis, please contact your surgeon for instructions and guidance as to when to resume taking these medicines. Vitamins and supplements. Take a multivitamin and probiotics for four weeks before and 12 weeks after surgery. Take vitamins A, C, and zinc for 12 weeks after surgery. Take Arnica Montana and Pineapple Bromelin for two weeks after surgery to help reduce bruising. These vitamins can help boost your healing. You may resume other supplements you normally take six weeks after surgery. Activity. Rest. Rest is important during the early stages of healing. Walking. However, it is equally important that you are ambulatory. Take a short walk inside the house every two hours while awake to improve circulation during the first 72 hours after surgery. Use assistance if needed and use caution. Exercise. No exercising, lifting more than 10 pounds, or straining for at least six weeks after surgery. This includes working out, running, jogging, cycling, swimming, hiking, lifting weights, carrying heavy objects, and sexual activity. Also, avoid raising your arms and pushing your arms forward for at least six weeks. Gentle walks are permitted, and early walking is important. Use common sense. If it feels like too much, or if it hurts, then don't do it. Avoid the temptation to do too much, especially as you start feeling better. Overexertion can cause serious problems such as bleeding, wound disruption, and implant extrusion. It is important for you to help keep yourself safe. Driving. Do not drive if you're taking narcotic pain medicine, for example, Percocet or Vicodin, etc., or relaxing medications such as lorazepam. You may drive with caution in approximately seven to 10 days and after you have discontinued pain medicine. Leg pump exercises. Please perform leg pump exercises every hour while awake for the first two weeks after surgery. 
to perform the leg pump exercises, squeeze and contract the calf muscles and thigh muscles of both legs for a total of 10 seconds while lying down or sitting. Repeat every hour while awake. This exercise helps to increase the circulation of blood through your legs and helps to prevent blood clots. Deep breathing exercises. We encourage deep breathing exercises after surgery. Take as deep of a breath in as you can slowly, then slowly exhale. Repeat 10 times every hour while you're awake for the first three days after surgery. Dressings and wound care. Keep all dressings clean, dry, and intact. Expect small amounts of drainage and a small amount of blood from the surgical site for a few days to a few weeks following your surgery, especially from any drain sites. If bleeding occurs, apply direct pressure for 15 minutes. If it does not stop the bleeding, contact your surgeon immediately. If you experience continued drainage from the surgical site, you may replace or reinforce the dressing with dry gauze to prevent leakage onto clothing. Incisions. Most of the sutures are absorbable, but a few sutures may need to be removed approximately one to two weeks following the procedure. Because areas may be closed under tension, small areas may open along the incision sites following your surgery. If any wound openings develop, please send a photo and notify your surgeon. If this occurs, open wounds are usually not closed with sutures once open. Dressing changes will be needed in order to allow the wounds to heal, and these wounds may take several weeks to heal following surgery. If the opening is wide along the length of the incision and not deep, wash the affected areas with soap and water. Next, apply polysporin ointment, not neosporin, and cover with non-adherent gauze. If the opening is deep, call the office for wound care and dressing instructions. Do not wear any makeup on or around the operative site until the stitches are out and the wound is completely healed. You may apply scar gel once the wound is completely dry and sealed, typically after about four weeks. Your surgeon will recommend the best scar gel for you. Showering. You may shower after three days. Face away from the shower spray to prevent discomfort. Your wounds may be gently cleansed with a mild soap and lukewarm water. Pat dry immediately afterwards. If there is any tape on the incisions, it is okay for the tape to get wet. If the tape comes off on its own, you may leave it off. Getting the stitches wet in clean water will not harm them. Tell permitted by your surgeon, you should not bathe or swim in pool water, ocean water, bath water, etc. These are considered to be dirty water. No soaking in the bathtub, hot tubs, or swimming for six weeks. Ice and heat. Use ice for three days to reduce swelling and pain. Apply ice packs wrapped in a thin towel to the surgical site in 20 minute intervals. For example, 20 minutes on followed by 20 minutes off. Your skin will be numb after surgery, so it is important to be careful when icing. Be careful not to ice directly on the nipple as this is a more sensitive area. Bags of frozen peas or corn work great as an ice pack since it can mold to your breast shape. You want to avoid heat for the first three weeks after surgery as heat can increase swelling. After three weeks, you may apply a warm heating pad as needed for comfort. When applying heat, it is important to be very careful. The sensation of your tissues is usually decreased after surgery. You may not feel just how hot a heating pack is, and this could cause a significant burn. Garments. Your post-surgical bra and or garment should be worn at all times, 24 hours per day, seven days per week for the next six weeks. You may remove the bra or garment for short periods of time to shower, to go to the bathroom or to wash the garment. The bra or garment should be snug, but not tight or painful. Do not wear underwear when wearing the garment. Be sure the bra or garment is worn smoothly and does not pinch or put excessive pressure on your incisions or your skin. You may use gauze pads to cover the incision under the bra for protection. Do not wear push-up bras or underwire bras for at least three months after surgery, unless otherwise instructed by your surgeon. The bra and or garment are essential factors in promoting a safe and comfortable post-operative period and proper healing. In certain cases, the surgeon may require you to wear this bra and or garment for additional time. Breastband. Some patients will also be given a breastband. The breastband is a compression wrap that provides stability for breast implants and helps the implants move down into place. The breastband should be worn over the top of the implants. Implant massage exercises. You do not need to perform breast implant massage or implant displacement exercises unless you are specifically instructed by your surgeon. Massages without directed purpose may increase trauma and inflammation. 
drains. Small drainage tubes may be used after surgery to assist with healing. Care for your drains according to the instructions given to you before discharge. All drain output should be recorded on the sheet given to you, a blank sheet of paper, or your phone. Bring this log with you to your post-operative visit. This will determine when drains are ready for removal. The drain output should be recorded and emptied every 12 hours. To empty the drain, remove the drainage plug from the end of the bulb, being careful not to touch the drainage spout. Drain into a measuring container. After emptying the drain, fully squeeze the bulb in your hand and reinsert the drainage cap to activate the suction. The bulb should stay compressed, although occasionally it may not, which is okay. Record the drainage amount. Once the drainage totals are less than 30 cc's in a 24-hour period for two consecutive days, please call the office to schedule an appointment for drainage removal. Do not forget to bring the record with you to your appointment. The site where the drain is attached to the skin may leak, and you may need to use a piece of gauze at the site to prevent the fluid from leaking onto your clothing. If you have more than one drain, it is okay that they are draining different amounts from each other. Also, the drainage color may vary from one drain to the other. Make sure that you have no tugging or pressure on the JP drain. This may pull it out of the incision. You can pin the bulb or tie the drain around your waist. When showering, the drains may need to be secured to a string or shoelace placed around your neck. The drain should be level or below the incision in order to maintain suction. If you think that your drain is clogged, try milking or stripping it gently. At some point, you may notice a white piece of plastic in your drainage bulb. This is nothing to worry about. Your drain will still function appropriately. Smoking. Please avoid all forms of nicotine for at least six weeks before and after surgery. Nicotine is a vasoconstrictor and may increase the risk of unnecessary post-operative complications such as infection, tissue loss, wound disruption, delayed healing, and implant extrusion. Cannabis. Please avoid all forms of cannabis for at least six weeks before and after surgery. Cannabis may increase the risk of unnecessary post-operative complications such as infection, tissue loss, wound disruption, delayed healing, and implant extrusion. Sun exposure. Avoid direct sun exposure to the incision sites for 12 months following surgery. Use a physical barrier and sunscreen to protect the affected areas. Sun exposure may lead to darkening, also called hyperpigmentation, of the wounds. General timeline of healing. 80% of our breast augmentation patients are able to be up and about performing light activities within 48 to 72 hours. However, every patient is different. Some patients heal more quickly than others. Some are rabbits, others are tortoises. Most are in between. Some patients have a tougher recovery than others. It is important for you to take care of yourself by following these post-operative instructions. Healing will progress over time. Most patients feel healed after a few months, but full healing can take one to two years. Recovery after revision surgery. Recovery is often more intense after revision surgery compared to first-time surgery. Side effects may be more pronounced and take longer to resolve. General side effects. Anesthesia side effects. You may experience some adverse effects from the anesthetic medications that were used during your procedure. These effects will range from grogginess to fatigue to nausea and may last for several days after the surgery. You also may have a sore throat from the breathing tube or a sore upper extremity from the IV or positioning. Your prescriptions will help with these side effects. Surgery side effects. You should also expect temporary side effects such as pain, soreness, sensitivity, bruising, swelling, numbness, tingling, tightness, abnormal sensations, high riding implants, itching, fatigue. These side effects may occur at the surgical site or may be generalized. You may get worse before you get better, so be prepared. Time, patience, and self-care are key. Pain, soreness, and sensitivity. Pain and soreness are expected after surgery. Taking prescribed medication usually keeps the pain and soreness tolerable. Your breasts or nipples may feel extra sensitive after surgery. This will usually improve with time. You may use nipple shields as needed. Bruising. Bruising is expected after surgery. The bruising may travel elsewhere in your body due to the effects of gravity and circulation. Bruising will usually go away after a few weeks. Avoiding blunt thinning medication, avoiding alcohol, avoiding overexertion, and taking Arnica Montana and Pineapple Bromelain can help prevent and reduce bruising. Swelling. Swelling is expected after surgery. 
Swelling is most common at the surgical site, but you may also experience bloating or swelling of the extremities. Breast implants may look and feel high and tight for several weeks after surgery. The implants will gradually drop and settle down over the course of about three to six months. Abnormal sensations. Abnormal sensations such as numbness, tingling, tightness, sensitivity, and itching are common after surgery. They usually resolve over time, but may take up to 12 to 18 months to diminish. Asymmetric healing. Your breasts may seem uneven or asymmetric after surgery. For example, one side may be higher, tighter, more swollen, or more sensitive than the other. Higher tight tissues. Sometimes the breast may have an abnormal shape early after surgery. The implants, for example, commonly start off high and gradually settle down over time. If a lift was also performed, the skin is sometimes gathered and bunched up or tight after surgery. These are all common and typically improve over time. Natural asymmetry. All women have some degree of natural breast asymmetry, some more than others. Natural breast asymmetry will persist to some degree after surgery, even if surgery is performed specifically to improve symmetry. Whenever you start different, you will remain different no matter what surgery is done. Active participation and partnership. It is important for you to know that while your surgeon can perform your surgery, your surgeon cannot heal you. Your healing will depend on a number of factors such as your general health, your willingness to follow instructions, and your mental attitude towards recovery. It is up to you to be an active participant in your recovery process to help your body heal the best that it can. Following all of our instructions is very important, as is working with us to address any complications that may arise. Even surgeries that are done exactly right can have complications during recovery. If we have a concern about your healing, we are going to let you know and we'll work with you to resolve it. It is important that you approach your surgery and especially your recovery with the mindset that we are a team and you are an integral part of that team. We must trust each other to be working towards a common goal, your successful results. Positive mindset and self-empowerment. Finally, we would like to talk about the importance of your mindset. Going through surgery can be an emotional experience. Every patient has to go through their own journey. Some have it easier than others. You will temporarily look and feel abnormal. You will get worse before you get better. You may experience some ups and downs. You may heal quickly or slowly. It is important for you to take control of your own mindset toward your recovery. That means taking care of yourself by going with the program and following your surgeon's instructions and guidance. Going through healing can be an empowering or disempowering process, depending on how you approach it. It's natural to be worried about your own healing, even anxious or occasionally sad, especially in the early days when your healing looks rough around the edges. Additionally, your friends or family members who are well-intentioned may contribute to your anxiety by making you question your healing because of concerns they raise. But you have a choice in how you recover. Option number one, you can choose to empower yourself during your recovery by embracing the process, giving yourself permission to be vulnerable, taking care of yourself, accepting your body's natural response to surgery, and believing that your body is amazing. Option number two, alternatively, you can choose to suffer during your recovery by fighting the process, by needing and expecting everything to be perfect, by not taking care of yourself, by worrying about your body's natural response to surgery, and constantly focusing on what's wrong as opposed to what's right. Whatever you choose is what you will experience. It's your choice, but we strongly encourage you to choose option number one and to make one with the healing process and to channel as much positive energy as you can. The more positive energy you channel, the better you will heal and the better you will feel. Stress literally shuts down your body's healing process, so minimize it. Focus on healing your body and spirit. Know that you are amazing. Know that your body is amazing. Know that you are going to heal. Expect improvement, but not perfection. Close your eyes and visualize how great you're going to look and feel. The more you feel and believe this, the faster it will become true. Office visits. You will first be seen back at the office after a few days to a week or two. Regular follow-up visits will be necessary for proper aftercare. Follow-up visits are your responsibility until cleared by your surgeon. Possible reasons for concern. Call your doctor's office immediately if you experience any of the following symptoms. Fever of 101.5 degrees or higher for 24 hours or more. Significant increase in swelling, pain, drainage, or redness of any surgical site. 
severe pain not responding to prescribed medication, other symptoms or problems you aren't comfortable with after surgery. In the event of an emergency, call 911 immediately. Otherwise, please call our office at 415-655-7546 if you have any problems, questions, or concerns. We kindly ask that you reserve non-urgent questions for business hours.